Welcome, friends, to the Someone Gets Me podcast. I am your host, Diane Allen, and I am so delighted that you're here. This podcast was created because I believe there is a visionary leader inside each one of us who is waiting to be seen. In each episode of Someone Gets Me, you will hear useful tips from successful visionaries who will share their stories about how being seen has allowed them to take their vision out into the world with action. Sheriff Grady Judd is going to talk to us about visionary leadership today. Welcome everybody to the Someone Gets Me podcast. I have an amazing man who is a visionary and has a really strong mission in life. And Sheriff Grady Judd is going to talk to us about his world, his life, and whatever else comes up in our conversation. So welcome, Sheriff Judd, to the Someone Gets Me podcast. Diane, it's my honor to be with you and with all of your viewers today to talk about something, 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 <laughs> something whatever exciting. you want to say. <laughs> well, I have one question because I know you've okay. been in law enforcement since the 70s. I and, have. And I've been doing my work since around that kind of time, too. And I'm wondering, like, how did it all get started? How did that vision in you get started? into this amazing career that you've created? Yeah, I think it's a God thing because, you know, I wanted to work in law enforcement and be the sheriff from the time I was four or five years old. My mother back in the day, if you remember, they had eight millimeter or super eight millimeter cameras right. actually has little videos of me wearing a policeman's outfit that she bought me. And I never ever wanted to do anything else in, as a career other than work in law enforcement and help people. So even as a youngster, that, that was my dream. And I grew up and got to do exactly that. Now, how many people can say they wake up every morning after their entire adult life and a job, usually before the alarm goes off to come to work, all excited to help someone? I get to do that every day. Oh, that's great. You remind me of my nephew when he was little. He was like three or four. He's 28 now. He said he was going to fly planes in the, in the military. I'm going to be a pilot in the military. That's what he's going to be. And that's what he's doing. <laughs> he, like, just oh, kept going. he just kept going through the steps and now he's in the army. And, it, and it's, it's like that. It was like a laser focus ever since he was four or five. And I think that's a really big gift. So when somebody is thinking about supporting law enforcement, like I have a lot of friends who are attorneys and detectives and police officers and all in that world. And I often ask, how can all of us out here in the world support people who care about justice if we're not on the front lines? Like, what can we all do, like me and regular people out in the world do to support other people who care about justice? Because you obviously care about justice. Sure. I think your your support, your visual support, your vocal support means a lot. You know, there has been some of this wokeness going on around the country, defund the police and all, all of that nonsense. Right. That's that's not how the majority of the people think. If you look at this country as as on a bell curve, okay. the vast majority of everyone is either center left or center right. That. 10% or 5% on the fringe left, about 10% or 5% on the fringe right, do not represent the overwhelming majority of this community. But in the last few years, because of social media and a mainstream media that's not mainstream any longer, they've all marched either to the far left or to the far right. And that's all we see. And they want us to believe that radical left or radical right, that's how this country operates. And it really doesn't. 80 to 90% of this country are hardworking, God-fearing people. They do what's right. They behave. They support their community. And sure, we have different opinions about things. You're supposed to. If we're all thinking alike, then we're not thinking. Right. But so I dismiss all of this craziness that we've seen the last few years, because that's not the America I know or the America I grew up in. And that's not the, the people that I interact with every day. I see good people. And that's what I get up 
every day. I see the good in people and I see people who are struggling, who need help. And then we get to provide that help. And that's pretty special to me. It's very, it's very special to step in in that place of service where people who need it know that they have someone they can trust to help them. Well, you can always dial 911. And we never ask, are you a registered Republican or Democrat? Did you vote in the last election? Did you pay your taxes? You know, who do you support? We unconditionally run to you to help you, to protect you, to keep you safe, to save you from danger or to save you in a medical malady until we can get EMS and fire there who also rush in and help without any concern about what your position in your political positions or your personal position or your economic position. And that's the goodness of America. And that's what I see every day. Oh, that's, I love that. That gives me goosebumps because that's what I see. I see the good in people and good in the majority of people. And I think when we go too far in any direction, we're too far, we're too far, you know, to say it that way. So a lot of gifted people and bright and talented kind of visionary folks to mostly the people that I work with are really sensitive to doing the right thing, making things correct, making sure that things are for the best of all people. And I know that that's a lot of your vision in your world. I mean, I've heard you a lot over the years. I, I lived in Lakeland, you know, before you were sheriff, but you were there and and I've seen the, the amazing positive changes in that community as a result of your leadership. So it's clear to me that you're a visionary just, just from the outside. And so how would you encourage somebody who has a heart for justice to follow that vision? What would you do if they were feeling stuck? What, what would you say to them? Sure. Well, I'd first tell people that if, to have a vision for justice, you've got to have a dream first. And you've got to take that dream and change it into a vision. And then you've got to take that vision and add work. Work, work, work is the only thing that gets you to the end game, no matter whether it's a vision for justice, a vision to be economically set in life when you age out by saving and focusing. But everything takes focus and it takes commitment, and it takes hard work. And I tell folks, until, until you have a principle-centered life, nothing else works. You know, you look at Stephen Covey. He talked about God needs to be first in your life, then your family, and then your job. And when you're, when you're focused and when you have your life in line, then good things happen. Doesn't mean that you're not going to get knocked down occasionally, but when you get knocked down, you get back up. And that's what it's all about. Yep, perfectly. I, I love Stephen Covey's work. And in fact, I just l- released a podcast episode recently on the, the spiritual principles of leadership. That Absolutely. So, it's so important to have that as, as your core foundation. And I love that you brought up work because I see a lot of people who just want to like, dream it in and ma- think it's going to be magically dropped in their lap and they don't understand that it takes focused work. And so well, it's, glad- it's a big problem when we don't teach our children how to work right. and we don't teach them that there are positive outcomes from hard work. And that's, that's an important part of this, this entire system and process, whether it's for social justice or personal self-satisfaction, nobody gives you anything in life for free. No one. And if they do, and you don't, you don't know how to work to appreciate it, then if you get something free in life, you'll end up just poofing, as I say in my world, poofing it away. It it turns into a vapor and it's gone. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, if you have that energy and you have that enthusiasm and you find what you love. Okay. Yeah. If social justice is what you love, then you work hard toward that. And I hear people and I watch people all the go all the time say, Oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. Well, is it not fair in your mind or is it not fair? Because just because it's not fair in your mind doesn't mean it's not fair. 
right? You know, at the end of a ball game, if you your team loses the game, you may not say it's not fair, but you think you should have won. Well, you don't always win in life. Some, and winning's not so great if you don't occasionally have a setback. So if it weren't for the valleys, the mountains wouldn't seem so beautiful. Totally. Yep. Exactly. So you just became, you just got an award of Sheriff of the Year, right? I did. Yeah. What an honor. That's a huge honor. And, and when I, I was reading about it and I thought, what, what no more perfect person to deserve it than you. And, oh, that's very, that's very kind. And I, cause I, I think that because of your, your faith and your commitment and your hard work, that it's a really good um, example for people who are trying to say, okay, how do I bring my vision to life? How do I go after what's important to me? No matter what the topic is, it takes vision and work and going after it and being willing to put yourself out there. It also takes education and you're well, you're a very well educated man too. And you've even taught in universities. So what is it that you think would be helpful for younger people, the college age people to learn, to help them embrace kind of the vision of work and going after what's important to them. Sure. First and foremost, it it is truly an honor to, to be recognized by your colleagues and your peers, but I wasn't recognized for my good looks. I was recognized (laughs) for hard work. Yes. And, and then once again, I got the credit whenever I got the award, but the reality is I've got a team around me in the major county sheriffs that work very hard. I've got a team here at the sheriff's office that work very hard. So we could reach those goals in the association that they thought made me worthy of this when in fact, I wish we could have given this recognition to all of the people who really did the hard work. I just coached. Right. So sometimes as the the CEO of an organization, you get too much credit and then sometimes you get too much blame, but I'll, I'll accept the blame and the criticism because when I'm critiqued, you know, a good, honest, critic is really a good friend of yours because they're helping you out. As you move forward in this leadership realm, people at the college age need to understand that it's not all about sitting at home with a laptop and a Zoom. Mm -hmm. I, you know, of course, I came up in the era before you had online classes. But to me, an important part about leadership and leading is social interaction. Hmm. It's the opportunity to pick each other's brain in a classroom, to learn from each other. And I can tell you from the COVID times when we use this social media called Zoom a lot, Mm -hmm. right? Right. That a normal hour meeting was over in 20 minutes because we were so bored with trying to have a meeting on Zoom and not have the, I call it the energy of the personal meetings that we just dealt with business and went on about our life. So I caution the young folks, as you use these fantastic tools called social media and the research you can do online that back in my day, we spent days in the library yes. and and what what took us forever to search up in a library you can search up in literally minutes online i mean they have no idea what pain is until they take a <laughs> saturday and they're there when the librarian unlocks the door right and then the librarian's telling you at night at nine o'clock you got to go home so we can close this place up because it took all day long to do a project in a library that you can do in two hours with, with research online. So, so enjoy the technology. It's beautiful and it's wonderful. And it gives you a, really a bigger perspective in that you can research more faster. Right. But also don't forget the social interaction. That's part of being able to be successful is to be social and face to face and have meaningful conversations and i like to talk about the 
the critiques. When, when you're in a class or interacting and you get these other opinions, that's what helps you grow in the way you think things through as well. Because yep. no one of us has all the answers, but all of us has the answers when we work to get work together. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. I agree with that a hundred percent. And I think that energy of the connection of the human personal connection is vital. And, you know, I hope we don't, the culture doesn't get lost in electronics and the, you know, the, the human connection stays. Cause I think that's extremely important in leadership and in health and for our health, you know, for, for everything, I, I think mental health is is not good when you're by yourself all the time with a, a laptop or a computer. Even if you're having some social interaction, mm-hmm. it's not the same as as the as a personal interaction. Right. So at at the end of the day, you know, it it takes a little bit of this and a little bit of that to make a cake. Well, it right. takes a little bit of this and a little bit of that to be successful in life. But at all, whether you're making a cake or you're working to be successful in life, it all takes work. And I love hearing you say that because I, I talk about work and taking action. And when I start talking about taking action, people roll their eyes at all. I'm like, well, you have to do something. <laughs> we have, you have to get off and, and go do something with it. Yeah. You know, Leave, so- follow, or get out of the way. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I haven't said that in a long time. Thank you for reminding me. I love that. So I know that I've asked you a lot of these leadership questions, but one of the things I wanted to know is as a leader and as somebody who's got this long career that you're very happy in, what have you done or what do you do for fun? I work. You work? Yeah. I I love to work. I tell everyone that's my number one hobby. But I also, you know, I've got grandkids, so I love spending time with them. And I'm a, a nature and a landscape photographer. That's my big hobby. Ooh, I love flowers. I take amateur pictures of flowers all the time. I, they're just all so beautiful. Well, you know, to, for me, how can you be on the water or in the woods or down in a swamp photographing the the different vegetation or the wildlife and not know there's a God that stuff just didn't get there by itself and nothing good happens by itself in, in leadership, in work or at home, nothing good happens by itself. Somebody makes everything happen. So, so my hobby is just that it's, it's things where I can interact with nature after I'm, tired of interacting with people and as much as I love people and I really do if I want quiet time I get my camera and run to the woods oh what a perfect way to to recharge Mm -hmm. there's nothing better than that nothing better than the woods or the woods or the water absolutely and and I spend time I spend time on the lake or time in the woods or the, the swamps are to me the most beautiful in Florida. People go, oh, it's a swamp. It's muddy and mucky and all that. Oh, the swamps are alive and you've got to you've got to be there to understand it. And if you if you've not gone into the swamps to see all of their beauty and all of the, the wildlife and the nature, then you've not had a complete life yet. Right. You've not had it. I remember when I didn't realize how beautiful the swamps were until I spent time in there and I'm like, whoa, it, it was not at all what my brain wanted to tell me it was. And I'm a Florida native, you know, so right. I, but I, we were on, we were in Sarasota. So we were on the beach. We, I didn't get the swamp thing at first. And then I'm like, oh, this is gorgeous. So do you use your intuition or your gut a lot in your work? I mean, well, yes. it's a nature this way and spiritual life. So I'm just curious how that works. You do. There, there's an intuitiveness about about what we do, but I believe that's based on education and experience mm-hmm. and wisdom. See, you you can't function appropriately until you have education in your discipline, yep. experience in your discipline, and a lot of experience in a discipline creates wisdom. And that in in blended in with that is an intuitiveness of which way to go based upon the circumstance. And, and quite frankly, you know, you can give a, a polar opposite answer to what needs to be done with what seems to be a similar issue 
depending on what I call the core of the problem. Well, you've got to be able to analyze that problem and get to what the real problem is, not a symptom of the problem in order to cure it. So that's where the wisdom and the experience comes in. Yes. Yes. There's a big difference between looking at the surface of the symptoms and going for the cause. Well, absolutely. And it's, it's like for me going to the doctor, you know, I don't, I don't want a doctor or a lawyer or a CPA right out of school. I want one with 10, 15 years of experience. That's the one that's going to navigate you through either that, that medical problem or that legal problem or that numbers problem successfully because they have the education, then they got the experience, and now they've created the wisdom from different experiences they've had along the way. Right. And that, there's a lot of value in that wisdom. Sure. And as a sheriff, that's that's. That's I tell folks, I'm here for the institutional knowledge and wisdom. I I don't have to put handcuffs on people anymore. I've got deputies to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't have to manage line operations anymore. I've got very well-trained supervisors. The attribute that I bring to this team effort, because it's all of us together that have a successful operation here, is wisdom in position and and years and years and years of institutional knowledge. Yes. And sometimes it's institutional knowledge about what to do. Many times it's institutional knowledge about what not to not do. Not to do, right. And the success of anything is knowing when to do what or knowing when not to do not. Right. <laughs> yes. A lot of people talk about just what action to take, but sometimes it's like when not to act in that way or go a different direction. Yeah. Believe it or not, sometimes the best decision is no decision. Yes. But you've got to know when that's best. And that comes with wisdom and experience. Absolutely, it does. So I only have a couple more questions for you. But before I got to those, I just want to make sure there wasn't something special on your heart that you wanted to share with everybody that I didn't ask you about yet. And to make sure that when we're done, you feel totally complete. No, I think you've done done an excellent job with the interview today. I, I'm very comfortable in my skin with talking about leadership or supervision, but it all comes down to you've got to love people first before you can lead them any place. Mm -hmm. And I love the people of Polk County, and I love the people in this sheriff's office. And until you care about them as an individual first, nothing else matters. And that's why I believe that I've been ultimately successful because people you love and you care for will reciprocate and they're all, they'll, they will also forgive you when you make those mistakes. And someone in a leadership position that works hard makes mistakes. And I've made my share of mine, of my mistakes while doing this. But once again, if, if, you, if you're falling forward when you make mistakes in leadership, people go, yeah, that was a mistake. But he made that mistake while trying to do good for the community or good for us. And once you understand people and they understand you on a personal level and find out, hey, that guy or gal in, in that position really is pretty cool. I mean, they got, they've got different ideas. We've got different ideas. We get to use all of our ideas together. And as a result, we have a successful operation. That's kind of where I operate from. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I it can feel it. You know, for those of you who are listening who have not been around Polk County or haven't heard about Sheriff Judd and things like that, when you mention his name or you watch it, you can see the change. Like I can see the change in the culture of the people over the years. And and I believe it has to do with exactly what you're talking about here. And that's why I invited you on the show, because I really think it's valuable for somebody that has history and a track record and an understanding to really share some of that wisdom for people who are looking around for what to do, or they aren't sure what to do or not do. So I sure. really appreciate you sharing that. And I have one final question for you. Okay. And that is this, if we were going to put a billboard up that the entire world was going to see with your quote on it, what quote would you like on that billboard? I want us all to win. Oh, I love it. I love it's, it. it's important that I want us all to win. And 
if I care about you and your family and the outcome, so you'll win, and you care about others and their families and their outcomes so that they win, then we all win. Yes. There's, there's no such thing as a win-lose. If, if there's a win-lose, then you both lose. And I want to lift people up to get their best out of them. Yes, some days, some days I am dogmatic in my demand that, that you can do better, you can do better, you can do better. But m my job is to, to help people reach heights that they didn't think they could reach. Right. Uh, despite the fact that I may ask them to jump higher or work harder or work longer, you know, and I, I try to get the best out of them. I, I do that because I love them and I care for them and their family. And I want them to be hugely successful in life. I want their family to be successful and I want to be a part of helping them get that way. Right. So that motive is what matters. Every day. It's the motive, right? Oh, that's awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Y'all have been listening to Sheriff Judd. I have his entire bio in the show notes, along with ways where you can follow the Polk County Sheriff's Office on all their social media and their website for your reference. So give it all a shot. Let him know that you heard him here on the Someone Gets Me podcast next time you see him. So thank you, Sheriff Judd, for being on the show. I so appreciate having you here with me today. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. All righty. Thank you. Remember, everybody, put your face to the sun so the shadows fall behind you because you're a rock star. You're here on purpose with a purpose. So go out there, let your light shine. And remember, it's time to check your motives and make sure everyone wins. Till the next episode, be well. Thank you for listening. I trust you gained some valuable inspiration and information. Please join me and other visionaries in the Someone Gets Me Facebook group. Or for more information on my services and additional episodes, visit someonegetsme.com. Again, thanks for listening.